Hello and welcome back to the Book Fox Summaries, bringing literature to life one summary at the time. Can't tackle that TBR pile? Don't have time to read? We got you covered. Today we are summarizing about a tale of survival and mutiny. The Wager, a gripping historical narrative by David Grand, plunges us into the heart of a maritime disaster and its tumultuous aftermath. This meticulously researched book, lauded for its thrilling storytelling and meticulous research, recounts the harrowing journey of a British warship and its crew. In 1740, HMS Wager, part of a squadron tasked with disrupting Spanish trade routes, met a disastrous fate off the coast of South America. The ship, battered by storms and treacherous currents, was ultimately wrecked upon a desolate island. What unfolded on that desolate island was a tale of survival, mutiny, and conflicting narratives that would later captivate the British public. Gran masterfully weaves together historical records, including the long-lost journal of a midshipman, to paint a vivid picture of the ordeal. He unravels the intricate web of accusations and counter-accusations that emerged when the survivors finally returned to England. The survivors' conflicting accounts of mutiny, murder, and the struggle for survival in the face of unimaginable hardships raised profound questions about leadership, loyalty, and the very nature of truth. The Wager, much like Grand's previous bestseller Killers of the Flower Moon, is a testament to his ability to unearth forgotten histories and breathe life into them. It's a tale that resonates with the timeless themes of human resilience, ambition, and the fragility of civilization when confronted with the raw forces of nature and the darker aspects of human nature. Grand's captivating narrative transports readers to the treacherous seas and the unforgiving wilderness of the 18th century, forcing us to confront the complexities of survival and the blurry lines between heroism and villainy. The Wreck of the Wager the HMS Wager, a 60-gun warship, set sail from England in 1740 as part of a squadron tasked with disrupting Spanish shipping and treasure fleets in the Pacific. The squadron, led by Commodore George Anson, faced numerous challenges from the outset. The journey was plagued by delays, disease, and a lack of essential supplies. By the time they reached the treacherous waters of Cape Horn, the ships were battered by storms and the crew weakened by scurvy. The Wager, already in a weakened state, was separated from the rest of the squadron during a fierce storm. Battered by relentless winds and waves, the ship was driven onto the rocky shores of an uncharted island off the coast of Patagonia. The wreck left the crew stranded on a desolate island, facing the daunting prospect of survival in a harsh and unforgiving environment. Their provisions were meager, their hopes of rescue uncertain. The immediate aftermath of the shipwreck was a scene of chaos and despair. Many crew members perished in the wreck itself, while others succumbed to injuries and exposure in the immediate aftermath. The survivors facing a bleak and uncertain future were forced to contend with the harsh realities of their situation. They had to find shelter, scavenge for food, and find ways to survive in a hostile environment. Their ordeal was just beginning. Marooned on a desolate island, the island later named Wager Island offered little respite for the shipwrecked crew. It was a desolate and unforgiving place characterized by rocky shores, dense forests, and a perpetually cold and damp climate. Food was scarce and the survivors were forced to rely on foraging for shellfish, berries, and whatever meager sustenance they could find. Hunger gnawed at their bellies, and the constant struggle for survival took its toll. Adding to their woes, the crew was a diverse group comprising seasoned sailors, inexperienced recruits, and officers accustomed to privilege. This mix of personalities and social hierarchies created tensions that simmered beneath the surface. The harsh conditions and the struggle for survival exacerbated these tensions, threatening to erupt into open conflict. Leadership faltered in the face of adversity. Captain David Cheap, the ship's commander, was a strict disciplinarian who struggled to adapt to the demands of survival. His rigid adherence to naval hierarchy and his inability to inspire confidence in his men created resentment and division. The seeds of discontent were sown, and the island, a microcosm of the British social order, began to fracture under the weight of their shared ordeal. The Seeds of Discontent As weeks turned into months, the survivors of the wager found themselves divided by suspicion and mistrust. Captain Cheap, clinging to his authority, clashed with John Byron, a young midshipman who emerged as a natural leader. Byron, known for his resilience and resourcefulness, gained the respect of many crew members, further undermining Cheap's authority. 
The captain's attempts to maintain order through harsh punishments only served to fuel the growing resentment. The discovery of a cache of salvaged food and supplies became a flashpoint for conflict. Captain Cheap, determined to assert his control, claimed the supplies for himself and his officers, further alienating the rest of the crew. This act of perceived injustice deepened the divisions and fueled the flames of mutiny. The island, once a symbol of their shared misfortune, now represented the breakdown of order and the struggle for power. The situation escalated when a group of crew members, led by Byron, decided to take matters into their own hands. They seized control of a longboat, intending to sail north in search of rescue. This act of defiance marked a turning point in the narrative, transforming the survivors from a cohesive group struggling for survival into factions locked in a bitter power struggle. The mutiny, born out of desperation and fueled by resentment, set the stage for a dramatic escape and a series of accusations that would reverberate through the halls of British justice. John Byron and his group of mutineers defying Captain Cheap's authority embarked on a perilous journey north in a hastily repaired longboat. Their escape was a testament to their desperation and their determination to seek rescue, even if it meant defying their captain and risking the perils of the open sea. Their journey was fraught with hardship as they faced storms, hunger, and the constant fear of being recaptured. Meanwhile, Captain Cheap and the remaining crew members were left to contend with the consequences of the mutiny. Their situation, already precarious, was further complicated by the loss of the longboat and the dwindling supplies. They were stranded, their hopes of rescue fading with each passing day. Their predicament was a stark reminder of the fragility of their situation and the harsh realities of survival in the unforgiving wilderness. Byron's group, after months of hardship and perilous sailing, eventually reached the coast of Brazil, where they were rescued by a British ship. Their return to civilization marked the beginning of a new chapter in the wager saga, one that would be dominated by accusations, counter-accusations, and the struggle to control the narrative of their ordeal. Their survival was a testament to their resilience, but their mutiny had cast a long shadow, setting the stage for a dramatic legal battle that would challenge the very foundations of naval authority. Contradictory Accounts the return of the wager survivors to England created a sensation. The public was captivated by tales of shipwreck, survival, and mutiny on the high seas. However, the survivors' accounts of what transpired on that desolate island were far from consistent. Captain Cheap, eager to defend his actions and salvage his reputation, accused Byron and his group of mutiny and theft. He painted himself as a victim, a leader unjustly deposed by a rebellious faction. Byron and his supporters presented a starkly different version of events. They argued that Cheap's tyrannical leadership and his mishandling of the situation had driven them to mutiny. They claimed that their actions were necessary for their survival and that they had acted in the best interests of the majority of the crew. Their account challenged the traditional narrative of naval hierarchy and questioned the legitimacy of Captain Cheap's authority. The conflicting narratives, fueled by personal agendas and the desire to control the public perception of the events, created a complex legal puzzle. The Admiralty, tasked with determining the truth and dispensing justice, faced a challenging task. They had to sift through contradictory accounts, weigh the credibility of witnesses, and ultimately decide who to believe. The court-martial, a public spectacle that captivated the nation, became a battleground for competing narratives and a test of the British legal system. The Court-Martial the court-martial of the wager survivors was a highly publicized affair, drawing intense public scrutiny and raising profound questions about the nature of justice and the limits of authority. Captain Cheap, determined to clear his name, presented himself as a victim of mutiny, a loyal officer unjustly deposed by a rebellious faction. He accused Byron and his group of theft, insubordination, and a blatant disregard for naval hierarchy. Byron and his supporters countered with a compelling narrative of their own, they argued that Cheap's tyrannical leadership, his mishandling of the supplies, and his inability to adapt to the demands of survival had justified their actions. They painted a picture of a captain who had lost the respect of his crew, a leader whose actions had driven them to desperation. Their testimony challenged the traditional power dynamics of the Navy and raised questions about the legitimacy of authority in the face of extreme adversity. The court-martial, a microcosm of the British legal system, 
became a battleground for competing narratives, a stage where the fate of the survivors hung in the balance. The judges tasked with sifting through the conflicting accounts and weighing the evidence, faced a daunting task. Their verdict would have far-reaching consequences, shaping the public perception of the wager mutiny and influencing the future careers of those involved. Justice and Empire The outcome of the court-martial revealed the complexities of justice within the context of the British Empire. The court ultimately acquitted John Byron and his group of the most serious charges, recognizing the extenuating circumstances of their situation. They acknowledged the failures of Captain Chief's leadership, implicitly criticizing his rigid adherence to naval hierarchy in the face of unprecedented challenges. However, the court also upheld the importance of naval discipline and the need to maintain order within the ranks. Captain Cheap, though cleared of mutiny, was reprimanded for his conduct and his mishandling of the situation. The verdict, a nuanced judgment that acknowledged the complexities of the case, reflected the delicate balance between upholding the principles of justice and maintaining the authority of the British Empire. The Wager Saga, a tale of survival, mutiny, and justice on the high seas, transcended the confines of a simple maritime disaster. It became a parable about the challenges of leadership, the fragility of social order, and the enduring power of human resilience. The events aboard the Wager, meticulously researched and masterfully narrated by David Gran, offer a glimpse into the complexities of British imperial power and the enduring human struggle for survival in the face of unimaginable adversity. Conclusion. Unraveling the Truth. The Wager, a gripping historical narrative by David Gran, invites us to delve into a maritime disaster and its tumultuous aftermath. The book unravels the intricate web of accusations, counter-accusations, and the struggle for survival that followed the wreck of the HMS Wager. Gran masterfully weaves together historical records including the long-lost journal of a midshipman to paint a vivid picture of the ordeal. The Wager is more than just a tale of shipwreck and survival, it's a story about the clash of personalities, the fragility of leadership, and the enduring power of human resilience. It challenges our understanding of heroism and villainy, forcing us to confront the complexities of human behavior in the face of extreme adversity. The book serves as a stark reminder of the capricious nature of fate and the enduring human struggle for survival against the odds. For those captivated by tales of maritime history, survival against the odds, and the intricacies of human nature, The Wager is a must-read. David Gran, known for his meticulous research and captivating storytelling, delivers a historical narrative that is both thrilling and thought-provoking. Dive into the pages of The Wager and uncover the truth behind the mutiny, the court-martial, and the enduring legacy of this extraordinary maritime saga. Before we go, we ask for your help. Please subscribe to our channel with your subscription, you are helping us to have the power to create more summaries, your comments and recommendations are welcome, please hit the like button, share with friends and turn on notifications to stay in the loop. See you next time.